Okay, I'm back in again. Uh, sorry guys, it took so long in that last video. I'll try to make this one real quick, but I wanted you to write down uh, these two sets of functions and I want you to give them a try. So if you watch my previous video, uh, I want you to look at these two problems and I kind of lined them up on how I want you to do them. And for these first two, I told you what I want you to evaluate the function for. And then for the last two, just go ahead and add them up and uh, see what you come with. So go ahead and write these down real quick and then what I'll do is I'll come back and show you the answers. Okay, let's, uh, let's go and give it a shot. Remember, when we have two functions, we need to add them up, right? So if I'm saying, oh, sorry. we need to add up all functions. Well, whenever it says the f plus g of x, that's telling us to take my f of x function, which is 2x minus 1, and add it to my g of x function, which is 2 minus x. So when it says to evaluate for the addition of 2, I'm still going to perform my operation. So I'll have 2x minus 5 plus 2 minus x. Well, combining those, I get, I can combine my x's, so I get x uh, minus 3. Then I need to evaluate it for 2, so I plug in a 2 minus 3. And therefore, my final answer, I'll just put over here, equals a negative 1. So therefore, I can write... So I can say f, I didn't really leave myself much space. So I can say f plus g of 2 equals negative 1. There you go, that's a little better. So now if I'm going to be doing the subtraction, uh, what I'll do is I'll make sure, and I'll probably, I'll probably move this over to the next one. So I'm going to do subtraction, I do the same thing, I just need to make sure I subtract my two terms. Make sure you distribute that in both terms. That now becomes a positive. This is a negative. If you drop, drop your sign. Therefore, 2x uh, plus a positive x is going to be 3x. Negative 5 minus 2 is a negative 7. Now I plug in my last term. 3 times 1 minus 7 is going to equal a negative 4. So therefore, I can say f minus g of 1 equals negative 4. All right, multiplication. Again, we have a binomial times a binomial. So I'll have 2x minus 5 times 2 minus x. Multiply the first two terms, I get 4x. Multiply the outer terms, 2x times negative, negative x is going to give me a negative 2x squared. Multiply by inner terms, negative 5 times 2 gives me a negative 10. And then for my, outer, my last terms, a negative 5 times negative x gives me a positive 5x. Now, I write my highest degree first, so I'm going to move that to the outside. I combine my like terms, which gives me 9x, so I'm left with negative 2x squared plus 9x minus 10. Then I evaluate it for negative 2. Okay, so negative 2 squared is uh, 4. 4 times 10, negative 2 is a negative 8. Plus 9 times negative 2 is a negative 18. And negative 10. So I really have negative 8 minus negative 18, which is negative 26, minus another negative 10, which would be a negative 36. So I can say f of g of negative 2 equals negative 36. Now let's look at the last one. If I had f over g, you're like, man, why did you scrum all that stuff? Is that irrelevant? Hmm. How you guys doing? Okay. So if I have f of g, and then I want to evaluate it for x minus 1, so I'm first going to divide it. So I'll have 2x minus 5 divided by 2 minus x. Then it wants me to evaluate for x minus 1. Well, guys, just like it was any other number, you can still evaluate it for that term. So therefore, now I have 2 times x minus 1 minus 5 over 2 minus 
x minus 1. So I simplify this. Now I use my distributive property. I'm left with 2x minus 2 minus 5 all over 2 minus x plus 1. I simplify this one more time, and I get 2x minus 7 and, 2 a, and negative x plus 3. Therefore, now my domain um, has to be, or I'm sorry, my domain cannot equal 3. Okay? So just remember always to include your domain on that. All right, so here. Now in our last one, we have f of x equals x squared plus 6. Then we have g of x equals square root of 1 minus x. Now this is very similar to the other one that we worked on. So my addition is going to be very easy. Again, since they're not like terms, you really can't do anything with them. If I had to evaluate, which I told you not to, but if you did evaluate, you could do the exact same thing. You just, whatever a number is in for here, you just plug it in. So f minus g of x is going to equal x squared plus 6 minus square root of 1 minus x. My f g of x, again, I'm going to have non distributive property. So the square root of 1 minus x times x squared. I don't know, yep, 1 minus x. And then square root of 1 minus 6 times 6. What I'm doing is the distributive property. Just trying to make it go a little bit quicker for you guys, but just make sure I have this term times these two terms. So I have to multiply by both of them. And then I have my division. Equals x squared plus 6 divided by square root of 1 minus x. So I know that x cannot equal 1, right? Because if x equals 1, then the bottom of my rational function is 0, which you can't have. Um, and then I need to determine what numbers does it have to be for it to be larger than 1 inside my radical. And what I notice is x has to be all numbers that are less than 0. Or we could say any number that is greater than 1 is not going to be a part of your domain. All right, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you uh, got these first questions right. Um, otherwise, go back and watch the video and then do them again.